I'm Alan Lawrence of WonderTouch, and in this tutorial I'll show you how I create a brand new particle emitter or effect from an existing library emitter in Particle Illusion 3. Note that most of what I do here can also be done in Particle Illusion SE, so SE users should be able to follow along too. Particle Illusion 3 ships with over 2300 emitters covering a huge range of effects, but sometimes you just can't find exactly what you're looking for and need to make your own. Although I can't tell you the best way to be creative and realize the artistic ideas that you have, I can tell you what I do when I'm making a new emitter, and I've made a lot of them over the years. My first tip is, start with an existing emitter. Although you may be tempted to start with a blank emitter, which you can create in any library by opening the emitter properties dialog for a library, selecting a folder, then clicking the new emitter button, why redo work that's already been done for you? Unless you can't find anything at all similar to what you want to create, there's really no benefit to starting from scratch. So here, I want to create a laser beam emitter that burns and creates smoke. I already know that there are existing emitters that burn and create smoke. It may not be exactly what I want, but a great starting point at least. We'll start by opening the June 2007 emitter library, select the Spark Flare with Smoke 4 emitter, and add it to the stage. My second tip, when working on new emitters, always work with them in the stage window. Don't edit them in the library. This is the safe way to go, as you'll always have the original emitter in case you mess things up and want to start over. Plus, you can save a project file with the emitter as you work on it as a backup, which we'll see in a minute. Now open the Emitter Properties dialog for the emitter by right-clicking on the stage emitter and selecting Properties. The first thing I know is I probably don't want sparks, so I'll toggle them off for now. On SE, you can set the visibility to zero. I'm not going to delete the sparks particle type yet, because I might decide later that I do want sparks. I also know I need a laser beam, which shouldn't be moving like smoke particles, but should be stationary like the intense center particles. So I'll select the intense center particle type and click the add particle type button to make a copy of it. I'll rename it to Laser Beam now so I don't get confused. Now click the Change Shape tab, then the New Shape Do Not Add to Library button under the Image Preview. If I knew that there was an appropriate shape image in the library already, I could just choose it and then click the Make Active button, but I know there's not, so I have to load one. I'm going to select a long, thin line image, then just click OK. What you'll see now is nothing like a laser beam yet but we're actually pretty close. Click the Behavior tab, and you can see that the particle angle is set to random, which explains why the lines are crisscrossing randomly. Change it to Specify instead, and now you'll see all of the lines at the same angle. Increase the angle until you get something you like. 60 degrees looks good to me. Now we just have to make the beam end at the correct place, and we do that by adjusting the reference point for this particle type. If we zoom out a bit, we can see that the reference point is at the center of the line. Just click at the right end of the line to set it there. Note that when zoomed out, it can be tricky to set the reference point exactly where you want it, and unfortunately you can't pan around this window. Once you get it right, you'll see our laser beam, but it's a bit too small. So select the size property for the laser beam particle type and increase its value until it looks good. We still have some work to do, but for now, close the Emitter Properties dialog by clicking the OK button. Tip number four, save a project file as a backup. Do this by clicking the Save Toolbar button. After saving, I'm going to select the emitter, then right-click and copy it. Now I'll make sure I'm at frame one, and right-click in another location on the stage and paste. Open the Emitter Properties dialog for this new emitter. Why did I do this? Think of the first copy of the emitter as a backup. If we make some mistakes, we always have the previous copy. Plus, you may decide later that you like both emitters and want to add both to a library. This way you already have a copy ready to add. Let's continue. Our laser beam is the wrong color, so select it in the hierarchy and click the Colors tab. I want the beam to be red, so right-click in the gradient and select Reset. Then click Yes if it asks you to confirm. You can turn this off in Preferences. Now select the color point and select Red. Right-click in the gradient 
which is only a solid color right now, and copy gradient. We're going to make some other particle types the same color, and this is the easiest way, especially if you have a complex gradient. Select the intense center particle type, right click in its gradient, and paste gradient. Whoa, that's looking a little crazy. We can adjust the size or visibility to reduce the central glow, but I'm not going to do that as I already know I want to change the shape image for it. So I'll click the Change Shape tab like before and select my new glow image, just like we did for the laser beam before. Now that I have the right image, I can adjust the size a little and I also want to adjust the color a little bit too. Just experiment until you get it looking the way you want. Now the final steps. The smoke glow particle types need to use the new gradient color. So select smoke glow, the colors tab, and note that the existing colors are not full brightness. Then right click the gradient and paste gradient. Then decrease the brightness to about the same level it was before. Repeat for the smoke glow 2 particle type. A little more tweaking may be needed, but we're essentially done. Since I've decided that I don't want to have sparks in this emitter, I can now delete the sparks particle type. If you think you may want to add sparks at some time, set the sparks number value to zero. The toggle state of the particle type is not saved in the emitter and you'll wonder why the sparks are showing later. Now click OK to close the emitter properties dialog. To add the emitter to a library, right click the emitter on the stage and select add to library. You could have also used the add to library button in the properties dialog. Now I'll save the project file again too. This way I have not only the new emitter in the library, but a project file containing it too. As you probably have learned at one time or another, you can never have too many backups. That's pretty much how I create new emitters from existing ones. There are other variations of this procedure. For instance, if I don't know what final effect I'm going for and just want to create something new. And I'll probably cover that in a future tutorial. But I hope this one was helpful. I'm Alan Lawrence of WonderTouch. Thanks for watching.